Thanks for being subscribed to the Real Solar Cars channel. If you remember a couple months ago, there was a solar eclipse over the Americas. So we use that as an opportunity to observe the effects of a solar eclipse on solar energy systems. If you've looked at our project on hackaday.io, you may have noticed that the data logger software we use is able to record data at one minute samples. So here is a table of that data and we will compare it to the times that the eclipse was happening. So here we can see during the maximum part of the eclipse, the energy coming from our solar charge controller was about 14 watts. Let's look at a uh, plot of this data for easier analysis. So our solar charge controller has two outputs, one for the high voltage traction battery and one for the low voltage 12 volt battery, the same as present in most all vehicles. So our charge controller gives priority to the 12 volt output. And the reason for that is in order to charge the high voltage traction battery, we have to also operate the battery management system and contactors, both of which require some 12 volt power to operate. And we want to be sure that we don't discharge the 12 volt battery while we are charging the high voltage traction battery. So here, before the point of maximum eclipse, we can see that the incoming solar energy is falling rapidly and then levels off at 14 watts and then increases rapidly as the eclipse is concluding. The 12 volt charger output is approximately constant before the eclipse and also after the point of maximum eclipse. So all of the change um, in, of incoming solar power is affecting the high voltage output until th at this point that the charge controller has decided that there is not enough available solar power to operate the high voltage charger anymore and it, the high voltage charger is switched off. And then the 12 volt output continues to decline because there is no longer enough incoming solar power for the 12 volt output to maintain a 13.8 volt regulation. And that is one of the ways that the, our charge controller determines whether there is enough incoming solar power to operate the high voltage charger. So if the low voltage 12 volt output can maintain a constant 13.8 volts, then chances are there is additional solar power available. Now, so we've established that during the point of maximum eclipse, our solar array was generating 14 watts. Now, how much power would it have normally generated if there was no solar eclipse happening that day? So here we recorded some data on the day after and found that, you know, for that, that same time of day, that that's our 420 watt solar array would have probably been generating about 202 watts. So here we can calculate that that is a 93% reduction in available solar power due to the effects of the solar eclipse. So how much of a reduction in solar power could we expect uh, theoretically? Well here the this site suggests that the eclipse had a 0.97 magnitude. So the magnitude is the ratio of the diameter of the moon to the diameter of the sun. A magnitude of less than one indicates that the apparent diameter of the moon is smaller than the diameter of the sun. This was not a total solar eclipse, it was an annular eclipse also known as the ring of fire because the a small amount of the sun is not covered by the moon 
even at the point of maximum eclipse here. So according to this calculator, with the 0.97 magnitude, the moon was obscuring 94% of the area of the sun. Now there are some other effects that we won't be figuring into our calculation because of the complexity of actually doing the calculation. So with the sun there is an effect known as limb darkening where the brightness of the at the edge of the disk of the sun is dimmer than at the center of the sun. And also like the part of the the edge at the edge of the sun the color of the sun is more reddish so that will affect the spectrum response that could possibly affect our solar power generation in addition to simply being dimmer here we have the calculation that suggests that 94 percent of the area of the sun was obscured by the moon so because with, of the limb darkening, we should expect a greater than 94% reduction in the amount of solar power generated at the point of maximum eclipse. And as we calculated before, our observed power loss was 93%. But then if we look on here, but of course this was not a fully controlled experiment because we can't measure the solar power generated on the same day and the same weather conditions with and without a solar eclipse. You know, it just can't be done. So we are using the day after the eclipse as our reference data for how much power would have been generated at, at that time of day. But here we see, like, we have went through our logs and found another very clear day and you can see that there is a little bit of concavity in the power output of our reference data here. So we could actually expect that the solar power from our 420 watt solar array should have been a little bit more than the 202 watts we used in our calculation. Which would mean that the amount of energy lost due to the effects of the eclipse would have been greater than the 93% we calculated and greater than the 94% based on the area of the sun obscured alone. So overall this was a fun experiment and thanks for watching.